Start recording. All right, so yesterday we talked about up, down, left, right, over X, over Y. So today we're going to talk about strengths and stretches. And this is where you have to really kind of think about it. We have vertical strengths or stretches, and we have horizontal strengths and stretches. Okay. A vertical stretch, if you think about, and it's easier if you think about an actual graph when you do this. The vertical axis is the y-axis, right? If I stretched that out, like if it was elastic and I stretched it out, what would happen to the graph? Think about, say, just a parabola. If I had this, just a plain old parent graph parabola, if I stretched out that vertical axis, what would happen to the parabola itself? Longer. It starts to get what? Longer, but what happens width-wise? Does it get wider or skinnier? Skinnier, right? So a vertical stretch actually shrinks the graph in this way. Does that make sense to you? All right, so a vertical stretch is going to happen when A, and my A is going to be outside, well, I should put it over here, outside for vertical. So if I just put a number outside that whole function, kind of like whenever I was doing reflections, if it just went outside the whole equation, then it, went, then it was a reflection over x. This time it's vertical if it's outside the whole equation, okay? And if that value outside the whole equation, and this is on your sheet, I'm on those last two little things, little um, rows there. If a is bigger than one, and I've got absolute value of A, it's bigger than one. It's a vertical stretch. And if the absolute value of A is less than one, then it's a vertical. This says compression, that's the same thing as a shrink. Okay, so if, if you compress that Y axis this way, it would smush that graph in and it would cause it to squish out on the sides. Does that make sense if you think about it that way? Okay. So, a vertical stretch is actually going to cause this graph to really, really, really squeeze in, and a vertical shrink is going to cause it to really widen up. Um, if I'm talking about a quadratic, which is what this is, um, an example of a vertical stretch might be f of x equals... I want bigger than 1, so maybe 2x squared. That would be a vertical stretch of 2. Does that make sense? And this, an example, might be, it's got to be less than. Remember the negative, don't look at the negative when I say less than, okay? Because the negative is just going to be a reflection. That's why we say absolute value. Maybe 1 half x squared, okay? And that would be a vertical shrink. Horizontally, if I do it to A this time, instead of just in front of the whole function. So the X has a leading coefficient hooked to it, okay? Or a coefficient, I shouldn't say leading coefficient, a coefficient hooked to it. All right, so a stretch, and here I'm on that very bottom part of your cheat sheet here. A stretch nope, is when the absolute value of A is less than 1. This is opposite of what you think. All right, so think about it. If you took the horizontal axis, that's the X, and you stretched it out, what's happening to your graph? Is it getting wider or skinnier? Wider, if you stretch that. But A is less than 1. Again, it's because it's horizontal. Everything with X is opposite. Okay, And then a shrink is bigger than 1.
This is going to look a little bit different, but if you remember the horizontal versus vertical shifts yesterday and how we had to hook it with X, it's the same concept. So a stretch might look like this. See how it's hooked with X instead of being in the front? Mm -hmm. You see the difference? And a shrink may look like this. Okay. Now, can you tell, looking at this, that these could actually be classified as the same thing? Now, the factors are different in the examples I gave. But what I'm getting at is a vertical shrink is the same thing as a horizontal stretch. Okay, so you could describe it either way there. All right, let me give you a couple examples. Y'all look dead. Here's my parent graph. Tell me what's happening. I'm going to do several things in different steps. You tell me what's happening. It went to the right twice. We all agree with that? This is new. What's happened? Right twice and then what? First of all, is it vertical or horizontal? Is it in front of the whole thing or is it hooked just to the X? It's in front of the whole thing. If it's in front of the whole thing, which one is it? Next to the last line there, so it's vertical. That's exactly right. Vertical, is it a stretch or is it a shrink? Stretch because it's bigger than one. It's a vertical stretch of three. Okay, now we haven't talked about what that means and how that's going to move the points. Other than the fact that the graph, is it getting skinnier or wider? Skinnier. Okay, because that y-axis is stretching out. Same thing, tell me how this one's different from the one above it. Up. Let's graph a couple. Let's do an absolute value. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to graph the parent, and then I want to graph the transformation from the parent using what I know. Okay. So the first thing, the parent is that absolute value. That V. Zero, zero, one, one, negative one, one. So the next thing I need to do is figure out is it, what type of transformation is this two in the front? Vertical what? Stretch or shrink? I've got a vertical stretch. My A is 2. Do we all agree with that? Look on your chart. Vertical stretch when A is bigger than 1. You've got a little, on the far right, the change. This is going to be most convenient for your stretches and shrinks, okay? We take every point. I 
and it becomes the x stays the same but every single y gets multiplied by your a value so every point is going to now become x and then 2y. Do y'all see that on your chart, on your little cheat sheet? Y'all got to talk to him here. I don't know if y'all know or not. You didn't get one, Alex? You look kind of confused. Yeah, a little half sheet, a little third sheet. Yeah, yeah, I just hadn't cut these down. It's just a whole sheet. <clears throat> All right, so zero, zero stays zero, zero. Remember, it's not shifting any. It's just stretching or shrinking, right? All right, and if I've done this correctly, if it's a vertical shrink, my graph should shrink in, right? I mean, a vertical stretch. My graph should sh shrink in horizontally. All right, if this was one, one, and every point, my x stays the same, but my y doubles, what is my new point? One, two. Do we see that? One, one now becomes one, two. Does that make sense? All right. What does negative one, one become? Negative one, one becomes negative one stays the same. Double that y. Does that look like a vertical stretch? Yes, because it is. Let's do another one. Okay. Tell me when you give me another parent graph, anyone. What's your favorite one? X squared. How is this different than the one we just did? It's, it's on the inside, not the outside, right? It's a parabola, not the V, not the square root. I mean, not the absolute value. So let me do my parent. Zero, zero, one, one, and negative one, one. Well. Is it vertical or horizontal? It's hooked to X this time, so what is it? Horizontal, because it's hooked to X. What is your A? Two. Does that make it a horizontal shrink or a horizontal stretch? Horizontal, look at your sheet. If it's bigger than one, it's a shrink. It's a horizontal shrink. So essentially, it's the same thing I just did, right? Because a vertical stretch is the same thing as a horizontal shrink. All right, so look at that, um, the very bottom row there. It says, for every point, take X and divide it by A, but keep Y the same. Because remember, everything horizontal or x is opposite. Instead of multiplying the x's by a, I'm dividing the x's by a. Okay? Zero, zero stays the same. What does the point one, one become? Take x and divide it by a. So it becomes, so one, one would become one half one, right? Mm -hmm. One half one. How about the other point? Negative one one. Mm -hmm. Negative one half. I know this is a little bit foreign to you, more so than the translations and the reflections. It's a little bit harder. Do you see how I'm using this sheet to guide my points, though? Use those points on the parent graph. Yes. <laughs>